Welcome back to DXB Today, where we have ourselves something of a wedding special. And time now to introduce our next guest, co-founder and MD of Rebecca's Bridal and Occasion Wear. Jesse Rebecca is alongside us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Let's talk trends, if we can. Obviously, we've been talking about the trends of, of, of weddings as well. But when it comes to something as traditional and classic as a wedding dress, for both brides and grooms, do you see trends in the sort of fashion side of things? There have been a lot of new trends, uh, especially this year, particularly after the pandemic. Uh, but what we always tell brides is, regardless of trends, if a dress fits you and you feel great in it, go for it. Mm. Stick with that. Trends would come and go because uh, five years, ten years down the line, when you're looking at pictures, your wedding pictures, you want to be proud of the dress that you chose. Mm. That it wasn't good for that time and era. It's Timeless. Timeless, yes. yeah. yeah. Now, Rebecca, I can just imagine how overwhelmed brides must feel because there's so much choice in the market. And if I was in that position, I think I'd be having major anxiety attacks on what to pick, how much to spend, what's appropriate, do I rent, do I buy? How would you, you know, advise brides to navigate that journey? Yeah, planning. Planning is key. We would ask brides to come to us uh, up to a year before the wedding. Oh, wow because there's not one type that suits every bride or every bridal style. So shop for your body shape, that's also important. You may have a mood board, this is my dream dress, but we would encourage um, brides to try that, a, a silhouette, which is different from what they thought they would look good in. And many times we have surprised brides because when they actually see the wedding dress on themselves when they're trying it on, uh, their whole mindset, their whole um, the what they thought you know they would look like in a particular silhouette changes so brides come in with saying no lace that's fine just try on a little bit of lace it doesn't have to be overpowering and um, you know little details can just add to the elegance um, and give a modern look for the bride. Jesse that was actually something I was going to bring up because that exact same thing happened to me. I had a very fixated um, you know, idea of the types of dress that I wanted to have and the lady said, hold on, just try this and that ended up being my dress. So keep open-minded brides. Yeah. But one thing I wanted to ask you, you're, you're known for being quite an inclusive boutique. Absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, as a voluptuous lady, I struggled a little bit finding dresses in my size, to be honest. So what size range do you go up to? Are you inclusive of women of all shapes and sizes? All brides beautiful. This is what Rebecca's bridal believes in. And we talk about it. So we have sizes from UK2 up to UK30. There are different personalization options of color. Uh, it's the bride's special day and each dress needs to speak her style, her personality. So whether you're a plus size bride, you're a petite bride, you're a very tall bride, that would also need a lot of attention. Mm. We have a dress for every bride at Rebecca's. I mean, speaking of having an every dress, you brought one in and it looks absolutely gorgeous. What can you tell us about the dress that you brought in today? Well, this is a beautiful designer dress by Maggie Sotero, a well-known international designer. Mm. It's a ball gown with sparkly lining and beautiful lace, lace motifs placed really uh, nicely and beautifully. It just is more busy on the top where, of course, there's more attention to the bride, you know, around her face and hair. And then uh, the motives uh, are a little bit less busy as you go down the skirt of the dress. Uh, it's got spaghetti straps as well. Again, this dress is available made to measure uh, from sizes two up to size 30. I want to know about some of the weird requests that you get because surprisingly <laughs> enough I was recently talking to a wedding dress designer and she said there's a big trend in black wedding dresses now. Are you starting to see weird requests? There has been a pop of colour, not just black, there would be red, there would be a beige lining of blush or champagne and what's great about the wedding dresses uh, today is that you have several options to give the same dress a different look with sleeves, without sleeves. Uh, the bride walks into the ceremony with a very flared ball gown and soon that detachable skirt disappears so she can, you know, dance and be free at her wedding party. So um, one of the options uh, 
that the bride came up with was she wanted to have a short cocktail dress and she was very, very particular about sustainability. So definitely not a second dress. She wanted it all to happen in the same dress. So what we did was we put a zipper on the fishtail or the mermaid of the skirt. And as soon as the ceremony was done, it was easy to unzip and she had a really nice, sleek, well-fitted cocktail right, dress to <laughs> party in. So that was going to be my yeah. question with regards to that, because look, we're DXB today. We're talking and celebrating all things the Dubai destination wedding. But something so personal, but also traditional as well. Um, do you have to manage expectations? Because if people are getting uh, wed here, the weather conditions might be a little bit different. Is comfort also imperative? Comfort uh, along with fit is very, very important, which is why we always ask the bride the theme of the wedding, especially the venue. So you're obviously not going to be wearing a ball gown if it's a beach wedding. Um, so some yeah. Some people do though, don't they? <laughs> well, yeah, some people do. Yes, that's that's true. <laughs> you know, getting married in Dubai is very yeah. different to having a winter wedding it, back in it the is, UK. It is, it is. And Dubai being a very popular wedding destination, we have brides coming from outside of Dubai as well. Mm -hmm. We do Zoom calls and uh, it's mostly during, you know, the, the months, the wedding mm -hmm. season when uh, it is more pleasant to have outdoor weddings. So yeah, brides do um, discuss different options with us before coming into the country to celebrate their wedding vows. Now for brides who choose to get married in another part of the world, we did have a lot of experience with the pandemic, you know, venues kept changing. We would put on sleeves, we would take the sleeves off, we would add an extra layer of lining because they were getting married somewhere where it was super cold. Mm. Uh, the great thing about Rebecca's Bridal is we're not just a bridal boutique, we actually make wedding dresses as well. So all of those personalization options can be done in-house with the bride not having to go elsewhere to have the dress tailored to fit, alter to fit or have more options Grooms on the dress. Well? well, grooms sometimes accompany the bride and uh, we make sure there's complete confidentiality. We just tell the groom, uh, she's going to be wearing jeans and a sparkly t-shirt. <laughs> so. <laughs> Big thanks to Jesse. Jesse, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Now, thanks to Jesse for joining us live. Now, on with the show and today's spotlight is on a bespoke events planning company uh, here to create a little bit of magic no matter the celebration. From luxurious weddings to small gatherings, they do it all to meet your vision. This is We Do Events. My name is Riham Damanhuri. I'm from Saudi Arabia. Uh, and I'm the founder of We Do Events. Uh, we opened We Do Events in 2017, and uh, we mainly organize um, and plan weddings, and we organize uh, corporate events at the same time. So one of the misperceptions um, that uh, people think about is that um, they underestimate the, the, all the work that goes under uh, the, the job of an event planner or a wedding planner. And that's something that we try to address and, and put some awareness to, to people so that they can have an understanding of how we can help and how we can uh, make their lives much easier. I would say that we, um, that we managed to, uh, to go through COVID and to recover uh, from the COVID period. Uh, so we came up and up and running and uh, that was a major milestone because unfortunately some, some companies had to shut down, uh, but we managed to, to continue and come up on our feet afterwards. Uh, so right now we would like to expand the team and uh, we also we want uh, to extend our businesses into other locations so we have a bigger reach in our uh, destination wedding businesses. Uh, so it was quite easy, uh, surprisingly easy for us uh, to do all the registrations and the licenses and put it in place. Uh, so that was uh, quite easy at the beginning and also because Dubai has um, a lot of nationalities so we are able to cater and to uh, organize uh, a lot of uh, 
weddings from for for clients who are coming from different backgrounds and different cultures. They do exactly what they say on the tin. They do events. Uh, right, talking of events, it's time for the roundup. Do it. What you got for us? So today's roundup is about flowers actually. Flower shipments actually jump by 20% year on year as peak period for weddings begin in Dubai. This comes from our very own Emirates Sky Cargo shipping 3,590 tonnes of fresh flowers as demand soar amid, amid peak wedding season. Now Rhiannon, yeah. tell us about the flower craze in Dubai. What have you seen? I mean, Flowers in this region are huge, especially when it comes to weddings and events. Um, they take a big, take up a big segment of the wedding budget. Um, it varies from culture to culture, but indeed the Emirati brides, the Arabic brides in particular, love flowers. Um, so yeah, flowers are a big thing in weddings over I'm here. I'm very, very conscious of what I'm going to say here, given the fact <laughs> we're about to talk about sustainability say in a few not. moments' time. Um, and it's, 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 you know, 20 years ago, it wasn't a big discussion. Now mm. it is a big discussion, especially when you're talking about sustainable weddings. And it is, an, it, I'll tell you the one thing that, I, that amazes me is that mm. we're, we're having such advance here at the moment in the growing of salad greens and vegetables and, mm. and, and the farming, the hydroponics and all the infrastructure that's going into that. And yet we're still not growing flowers. Flowers, yeah. Um, and that's why we're dependent so much on freight. Um, it's a discussion that needs to be had, you know. I mean, I'm in a, in a position where I'm all about inspiration and helping brides find their suppliers, but I also do have a moral conscience and I do, I do tackle issues that a lot of platforms like mine don't. Mm. You know, I'm talking about AI in the wedding industry right now. AI for flowers. <laughs> AI flowers. Um, sustainability, I've touched on that a lot on Bride Club because, it, you know, there are many ways that you can have a beautiful wedding and also reduce your impact on the environment. I was going to say, speaking of sustainability, what suggestions would you make if someone says, I don't really want to do the flowers, they're very bad for the environment? Plastic flowers or are there other solutions? I mean, plastic flowers aren't great. I mean, they're not ideal, great for the environment, <laughs> are they? <laughs> but look, I mean, look what you have on the doorstep. We've got, you know, an abundance of Bogan Villa, you know, beautiful, bright pink flowers, greenery, local, you know, locally sourced florals, mm. um, uh, candles, um, soy candles, um, natural elements, rocks, you know, there's all sorts of things you can use. It depends on the theme, of course, but your wedding planner, if you've got a smart and clever and creative wedding planner, they can help you um, create a, a beautiful wedding. Yeah, but I actually did want to ask the flowers after the typical wedding. Yeah. Do they get thrown away after? Well, I'm actually not a wedding planner, but from what I know, more and more of my wedding planner clients um, have initiatives whereby they reuse, reuse the florals after. So if they have another, another event, it could be a corporate event, it could be a birthday, they could potentially be using those flowers if they're still good for that next event. They could be giving those flowers to hospitals, for example. Um, and so there are ways that you can reuse those flowers. That makes me right. feel so much better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, we've got more from Rhiannon coming up in just a little bit, right after the break. What have we got though? Now, after the break, we meet a real life Dubai bride who planned her own sustainable wedding. Plus, as a part of Dubai Fitness Challenge, we're trying to bring you the best workouts in the city right here from the studio. Tonight, it's all about boxing. So don't go anywhere.